in the, the media and uh, in the uh, newspapers about that shocking incident and how it convulsed society into looking at itself. Uh, I did a piece on Campbell for the, I think it was for, for ITV. And it helped me also reflect because you need to know this, is that Operation Blackboat was really born from that struggle. And I will tell you because she was there again on the front line. When the young boy died, nobody wanted to know. I think it was a year later that another Lawrence died. Philip Lawrence, the school teacher. The whole society was convulsed about the outrage, not quite rightly, that this good man had been murdered. And yet for Stephen, his parents, and the black community, nothing. Zilch. It was, it was not newsworthy. And yet, and yet, there were good people, good people, who said they will not let this die. They will not rest until justice. Come 1996, we were emerging. We said, we said, look, look, it's no longer that black people ask for justice because it won't happen. We said that we've got to demand it. I was tasked, I was tasked nearly 20 years ago just to see just how powerful the black vote was. Because we always said we've got no power, we can change nothing, we better sit down and do nothing. I spent six months doing the research. Six months. After that, I pulled Lee Jasper and others together and said, Diane came to the office too. I said, I've got a revelation, an absolute revelation. We are far from being powerless than we think we are. This was 1996-1997. Far from being powerless, actually, we can hold the balance of power in any general election at any time. And here is the maths. We may be, we may be only 8% of the population, but the way we are in those urban combinations, we can influence over 100 seats. 100 seats means we are political players. You have to bear in mind, in Thatcher's government during the 90s, they had a whole campaign to demonize black people. You know why? Because there was no political penalty to pay to demonize us. No penalty. In fact, the opposite. You won votes. When we did the research, when we put out there for the very first time that we could hold the balance of power, I don't know if we will vote, but if we did vote, we could hold the balance of power. It's a game changer. It's in the news all over the place. And hear this, what was striking. And it was almost as though there was a symbiotic work going on with black activists and black politicians. Because Diane and Bernie Grant mm -hmm. and Paul Bowtie mm -hmm. and Doreen Lawrence mm -hmm. bust their way through the door of Jack Straw. Bust their way. Nelson Mandela too, as a matter of fact. And said to Jack Straw, we want an inquiry. You want the black vote, we want an inquiry. Am I right or wrong, man? Two months later, I get a call, bearing in mind now, you know, I, I had no gray hair, we're young, we're young <laughs> activists, no money, but just, we had all this information. I get a call from Jack Straw. And I come and someone said to me, Jack Straw's on the phone. And I say, come on, you're joking. No, 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 Jack Straw's on the phone. I called up the office and he said this, listen to this. Uh, Mr. Simon Woolley, I know about you and your organisation. I want to hold a press conference. What do you want to say, Mr. Straw? You'll be happy with what I want to say. He said this. I want to come to a press conference and I want to say this. If you vote for Labour, the Labour Party will afford you a public inquiry into the death of Stephen Lawrence. I said, when are you coming? It's a game changer. We had the inquiry. We had that 
the inquiry. And it shone a spotlight on every public institution in this country. We knew as black people there was a subtle form of racism. It wasn't even subtle, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't say it. Until a white man said it. <laughs> and he said it beautifully. He did too. McPherson and uh, uh, Bishop Santanu and uh, mm -hmm. Richard Stone. They said, they said, from top to bottom, the Metropolitan Police is institutionally racist. And actually, so is the other every other public institution too. As a consequence, the law changed. Because we stood up. Because we demanded change. Why don't we vote? Go figure. How are we going to get justice? How are we going to offer our communities the, the, the platform to excel? Me and Diana are tired. Keep telling people, keep telling people the only way that we can change is if we become politically strong, economically strong, spiritually strong. <coughs> yes, we've made progress. The law changed. Diane will tell you that there are people before her and after her who have campaigned over decades, decades for social and racial justice. When, uh, when we started, when Diane was in Parliament, there were four, four MPs. You should listen, you can see the transcript of Diane's maiden speech, <coughs> railing against immigration. Am I right or wrong, Diane? Railing against it. <coughs> Firestone and Brimstone, or whatever you call it, it, it was. That's right. And anti, the anti immigration, the anti immigration stuff from the political party. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> 25 years ago. And yet the journey's not complete. Why do we vote? The journey is not complete. Let me tell you this there was a Conservative councillor. He said to me, he said to me 15, 15 years ago, he called me aside and he said, Simon, can you do me a favour? I said, what's that? He said, can you go and tell the black community, thank you. I said, what for? Okay, thank you. <coughs> tell the black community, thank you for not voting. No. Mm. So he said to me, to my face. Because, because they don't vote, I don't have to knock on their door. I see a black family, I go to the next door, they're not voting. Tell them thank you. They don't count. And he's right. Why vote? There's still work to be done. I know most of you here do vote. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to ask you to do more. I want you. I want you. To be like Pauline when she was on the street shouting and screaming and uh, with their profanities. But, the, but you know, the heart was there. We can be better. We can be bigger. I'm asking you to be warriors. To be warriors like Diane fighting for social and racial justice. I'm not asking you, I'm pleading with you. Some of you may have seen the news the other day. There was a gentleman, an African. He said, I've got the good qualifications. I'm going to go for one of those big time jobs with Virgin Atlantic. I've got the qualifications. I'm going to fill in the application. So he filled in the application. Nice CV. A few weeks later, we got a letter back. Thanks, but no thanks. You know, said, oh, it's a bit curt. I've got to hold all my degrees, all my qualifications. Let me just test this. So he wrote down the application again and changed his African name to Mike Owen. You know what happened, don't you? He got a letter back saying, Oh, we'd love to come and see you. We'd love you to have a chat. You sound fantastic. 
You sound fantastic. We are very encouraged to have a conversation. 2013! Why vote? A young black man cannot fulfill his potential for no other reason than his African name. Why vote? Even Michael Gove, I know some of you here don't love Michael Gove. Even Michael Gove said unequivocally that our children are marked down at school for no other reason than the colour of their skin. How does he know that? Because when our children's exams are marked blindly, they do better. So the only question is, what are we going to do? Now, we know this. When we do something, change happens. Just before Christmas, Michael Gove said, you know what, I've had enough of Mary Seacole. Mm. He did, he did. Mm. I've had enough of Equiano. Mm. He did. Mm -hmm. Erased of the history curriculum. We said, no. Diane said, what do I do? Where do I sign? Where do we march? Hmm. You know, within two weeks, 36,000 people signed the petition. Come on, do you go? I've got a letter from Michael Gove. I've got a letter from Michael Gove. He said, God's on his truth. Three weeks later, because black people rose, Mr. Woolley, actually, I think that Mary Siko and Equiano are very important for our <laughs> There should be more people like them. Why? He did. He did. Because he stood up. The battle in education is still to be had. Yes, he's booked Equiano. Patrick Vernon's here from uh, the 100 Black Britons. He was part of that campaign. Stand up, Patrick. Take a bow for that. Yay! Take a bow for that. Come on, Patrick! Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> It was a good campaign, wasn't it, Patrick? It was a good campaign. Patrick came into the office, he said, he said, stamping his, stamping his fist on the desk. We can't let him do this, we can't let him do this. No, Patrick, no. He was, he was. Uh -huh. But we did it, didn't we? Yeah, it was a good campaign, and I think the key thing about that, actually, people voted. It's not on People yeah. voted. But, but it's not, the deal's not done. Yes, he said yes to Equiano and Seacole. 